some time back, Russia has purchased a considerable amount of regular military drones and kamikaze drones from Iran. But is it out of weakness? I would say yes and no. Let me explain. Russia has a very advanced military complex. A lot of its military equipment outperforms any of that of its rivals or allies, such as air defense systems, hypersonic missiles, attack helicopters, or mobile launchers. And it stands in somewhat of the same rank with the US when it comes to fighter or attack jets. But what it lacks, however, is top-tier drone technology. I'm not saying that Russia's drone technology sucks, that's not what I'm saying. It's pretty decent, but being honest here, it would not be comparable to that of the United States. So Russia would be considered weaker when it comes to drone technology. Iran, on the other hand, started its military drone program somewhat of the same time with the US. It has been investing heavily in this technology for at least 30 years, and it has a bigger production capacity for these drones. Whereas Russia is not putting as much funding as Iran is doing in drone technology. Russia started developing them around 20 years ago. So the weakness we're talking about here is Russia not putting as much funding and research into drone technology. In this video, we'll cover why Iranian supply drones are very effective. I'm your host Isiv, and welcome to Defense and Geopolitics. A few months ago, Iran did a successful recon mission on Israel without being detected by advanced Israeli radars. About two years ago, one of Israel's top generals said the Iranian drones are advanced and very sophisticated. But why are the main drones exported to Russia? First ones are the kamikaze drones, such as the Shahid 136. According to Wall Street Journal, many high-ranking Ukrainian military officials labeled them as very effective at what they do. And as far as saying, a huge problem. That includes both kamikaze drones and regular drones, but especially kamikaze drones. A Ukrainian colonel called Kuligan said that instead of firing 100 artillery shells to hit one of our locations, it is enough to send one of these. These drones have a range of up to 2,000 kilometers that are fairly cheap to manufacture, probably around $10,000 to $20,000, and sold to Russia for maybe double the price. These drones weigh about 240 kilograms with a payload of around 40 to 50 kilograms. They can reach an altitude as high as 4,000 meters and can fly as low as 60 meters. And they have somewhat of a decent speed of around 180 kilometers per hour. What makes these drones even more interesting is that they do gather pictures and data before doing their mission, which helps intelligence officers gather data around the battlefield. These drones are also pretty hard to detect because of their radar small cross section and they also fly at relatively low altitudes. They are operating somewhat safely around the Ukrainian front lines where a lot of Ukraine's entire defense systems have been neutralized, having around 70 to 80% success rate. In areas where there is strong anti-air presence, a lot of them can be sent at a target, say 20 or 25. It's a strategy where they swarm anti-air defense systems and the anti-air defense system will not be able to shoot all of them. In areas where there is a strong presence of anti-air defense systems, they have a success rate of around 40 to 50 percent. In the battlefield, where troops are pushing for objectives, they can be a vital support for the infantry. Unlike artillery, which need a lot of rounds to hit a specific target, just a few of these can neutralize key enemy positions. Another military drone used by Russia is the Kots Mohajer 6. The Kotsmo Hazir 6 is a UAV capable of carrying multispectral surveillance payload and up to four precision guided munitions. The Mohajir 6 has a max takeoff weight of around 670 kilograms, a range of around 500 kilometers, has a max speed of 200 kilometers per hour, an endurance of 12 hours, and a ceiling of 18,000 feet or 5,486 meters. It has a fixed forward facing camera for navigation and a gimbal on the shin for a laser rangefinder and a multispectral IR, and a visible light electro-optical imagery. It is capable of being fitted with electronic support measures, communication jamming, or electronic warfare payloads. This drone would be considered a drone very similar to Bayraktar TB2 in specifications, but at likely a much lower price of around $2 million compared to the TB2's $5 million. This is not the most advanced drone of Iran's arsenal, like the Kaman 22, which is still likely under further development. But this drone is more than enough to do very good multispectral surveillance and search and destroy missions where there is a low presence of anti-air defense systems. 
Thank you so much for watching the video. I wanted to keep the video short and informative. If you liked the video, give it a like. If you didn't, give it a dislike. And tell us in the comments below, what would you like to see next? Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys next time.